Aleluia. Glória a Jesus. Amen. I greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. And we're going to open our Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter 8. Ronaldo, praise group, do they have a song ready? Praise group, no, praise, first praise group, amen. Today we have uh, another praise group that was raised, they are now recovering their voices. Next week they will sing, amen. Matthew 8, and we're going to read from verse number 5. I said us because I want to be a part of this praise group. This one was going to last. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come unto my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Amen. The brethren can sit down.
Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. My brethren, this text speaks about the experience of a man who was very well known in his city. Jesus, he always walked in the surroundings of Jerusalem. In his last three years of life, which were his three years of ministry, he walked a lot. There was no place for him to rest because he had an agenda. And that was God's agenda. That's why Jesus, whatever he passed, he was inside of the time of God. That's why all the meetings with him were meetings revealed by God, were meetings that were scheduled by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, whatever he passed by, he cured, he preached, transformed lives. People that were lost, disappointed, people that were hungry, people without a destination, people that have already been condemned to death. Jesus left a, a trail of miracles, wonders, and saved people. And here, it speaks clearly of this moment, one of the moments most, I could even say, most special moments for this man. When he enters on the city of, the, of Capernaum, Capernaum, there he, in fact, this man went seeking Jesus, when he thought that he was he went to Jesus, but in fact, Jesus was the one who went towards him. And when he arrived there, he described his situation. He was a centurion. A centurion was a commander. And normally, he took care of, of a group of soldiers, at least 100. That's why the name comes from Centurion. He was a leader, was a commander, he was an authority for these people, for these soldiers. And now he comes to Jesus and he describes his situation. He had inside of his house a servant, an employee, a person that took care of his things inside of his house. Besides having this soldier at his disposal, at the disposal of the Roman government, he also had inside of his house people that took care of his daily lives, of his, and, uh, the shores of his house. And the servant lived inside of his house and he said to Jesus, Look, my servant is paralyzed and he's being violently tormented. When, when Jesus hears that, he, he says that he is going to the house of this man. So now he explained to Jesus his condition. For sure, he, because he was a Roman, because he was not a Jew, because he didn't follow the same spiritual line of Jesus, he said, I'm not worthy of having you entering my, my roof, under my roof. So now he said, say just a word, because he had known about Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. For sure now, this man, in order to go to Jesus, this man may have already spent all his resources, for sure, had gone to the doctors, had probably tried everything that he, he could have uh, attempted, the medicine of the time, 
But when he heard that Jesus was going to Capernaum and that Jesus was going to pass by his city, he then he overcame a great obstacle, a barrier, a personal barrier. He went to Jesus. And this man was known by people. He was admired in another book. It says that Jesus, he heard good things about that man. The comments that Jesus heard, heard about this centurion said that this man was a, a just man, a good man. But it is interesting that what this man tells Jesus is the opposite of what people told about him. He said, I'm not worthy to have you to go under my roof, but just say one word and my servant will be healed. Imagine the faith of this man. He didn't know Jesus. But only by hearing Jesus, the Holy Spirit entered into his heart and placed in him this desire and this assurance that Jesus could heal and that Jesus could resolve his problem. And he says even more, because I am a man under authority and there are soldiers that are under my orders and they say go and they go and come back and they come back and my servant does, I tell the tell my servant to do this and he, he does and it's interesting that now he had a problem inside of his house and he tells Jesus look I have mm, several soldiers at my disposal Why, whatever I tell them they do it for sure that man because he was an authority he was always uh, helping other people imagine Imagine you having 100 people under your command. You can imagine how many problems this person heard. Of. Oh, I, I need uh, to have a break. I have problems at home. I have a problem with this. I have a problem with that. What do I do? 100 men, 100 soldiers. And he was able to resolve and to help these people or even to give instruction. He, uh, to him it was easy. But it is interesting that when he had a problem inside of his house, he was not able to resolve it. He went beyond his control. He too, it was out of his control. And my brother, interesting that there are many people that are like this. People that uh, are considered um, good people, people that are able to resolve problems, people that are able to help others, they are uh, their beloved ones. People would say, oh, this person, this person is, is knowledgeable, this, this person is wise, this person knows how to speak, knows how to act, this person has a word, uh, whenever this person says, says something, it's a word that is always inside of what I'm I need. There are people that do this, they are excellent to resolve someone else's problems and to take care of others, to help other people. But when it comes to their personal lives inside of their own house, it's always a defeat. It's a disaster. That's what he said. That's what he said to Jesus. He recognized his condition. Look, Jesus, you, you don't need to know to go to my house. I'm not worthy. There are people that feel like that, that they are unworthy. Unworthy to pray to the Lord uh, in the sense of having a, a life so irregular, a uh, life that is so contrary to the Word of God that they don't feel like they have the condition to pray to the Lord or picking up a Bible and reading a Bible. You, you don't need to go to my house. I'm not worthy to have you entering into my house under my roof. Say a word and I'm sure that my servant will be healed. He will be healed. But when the situation 
reached his own home, his own house, his family, his personal life, he, was, he ended up in a difficult situation because he didn't know how to deal with the problem inside of his own, inside of his nucleus, inside of his own privacy, inside of what he was, in fact. And we'll see people like this. And the Lord said tonight, there is here, there are here people like in this way, people that are having difficulties inside of their own homes. Difficult in difficulty in relationships, difficulty on uh, how to handle uh, children uh, or uh, mothers or husband, and the husband dealing with his wife, brother with brother, sibling with sibling. The Lord is saying this that there are people here, there are people that live in the same situation as this man, humanly speaking. I start of their house, everything is fine. But inside of their own house, that person has this barrier. That person has this difficulty. And that's what the Lord has shown. And uh, the, the Lord has shown that there is, uh, showing that there is a daughter that is having difficulty with the mother. No, no, the mother is having difficulty with the daughter. We're going to read the spiritual gifts in a few minutes. But my brethren, what the Lord has for us tonight is exactly this. Jesus, when he hears the situation of that man, Jesus is, he was moved. Because that man, he, was, he not only described his problem, but he also confessed to Jesus truly who he was. And he told Jesus, he opened up his house, he opened up his heart, and he said, Lord, I can't resolve my own problem. I can resolve someone else's problem, but my problem I cannot resolve. And in that instant, the word says that Jesus, he, was, he ordained by his word, he cured the servant of that man. And Jesus was uh, completely amazed. Um, verse 13, 13 says the following. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that s same hour. And Jesus didn't have to go to the house of that man. But in the way that that man is explained to Jesus, the way he opened up for Jesus, in the way he described his difficulties, he explained his personality, Jesus then entered into the heart of that man. And Jesus operated a great miracle. My brethren, what the Lord wants to do to us tonight is exactly this. But in order for this to happen, we need to recognize who we are. We need tonight, you need to tell to the Lord, not to, to the brother who is here, not to the pastor, not to the family member, but we need to speak to Jesus. Lord, I have a difficulty. I have a problem. My problem is this. My problem, Lord, is exactly this. While we are here describing this story, this experience, experience of this man, you need to say exactly this that the Lord spoke to, uh, Jesus spoke to this man. This man said, I am not worthy of having you entering into um, my house, but I, I have a, a servant who is, who is paralyzed and is suffering greatly. And my friend, the situation, these two situations here, he was paralyzed and, and dreadfully tormented. Those are situations that we go through every day. There are people that are like this. They are paralyzed. They, they, they get stagnated. They don't progress. They don't get out of that situation in which they are. They are completely 
paralyzed, without the ability to move, without the ability to overcome, without the opportunity of leaving uh, this, their situation and enter into the salvation. Because salvation is, dy is dynamic. A man opens up his heart to Jesus, the Lord reveals himself to him, and now man begins to walk and and a path that will lead to eternity. He begins to take steps uh, in Jesus. Man lives this situation of uh, dreadfulness and uh, as a sick person, a paralyzed, and he was dreadfully tormented. And there are people like this, people that are being tormented. Homes who are living in a situation like this is a torment. As a, a storm, as a trial, a difficulty, there's no peace, there's no harmony, there's no understanding, there's no forgiveness, there's no love. There are homes that are like this, people living like that. People that they love each other, but they don't lo love themselves. They are unable to love themselves. Dreadfully tormented. But in that instant, that man, he went to the right person. Because Jesus, like the song that we just sang, he can do all things. Whatever Jesus passed by, he changed the hearts. Whatever Jesus passed by, he operated. And through the voice of Jesus, just by Jesus saying with the authority that exists upon the voice of Jesus, Jesus cured the paralyzed, Jesus cured the sick, Jesus cured men that were uh, about to die, Jesus cured men that have been for 38 years without walking, just by his voice. And with his voice, Jesus calmed down, he calmed down the sea. It was violent, it was a, a storm, it was a terrible storm upon the apostles and disciples. But Jesus, with his voice, he brought peace, he brought calm to the sea. And that's what the Lord wants to bring to you who came here tonight, to many who are here. Because I believe that many people live in this situation. People that need to recognize that many times we make mistakes, I make mistakes, we all make mistakes. The first who has to fix the problem is myself, it's you who are here. But in order for this to happen, you need to recognize and understand and bring this situation to Jesus. Not only bring this situation to Jesus uh, or the people's problems, but you have to bring your problem. What is causing problems in your family, in your, in your marriage, your relationship with your, with your son or daughter, or a relationship with your parents, with your friends, bring it to the feet of the Lord. And you will see that Jesus has the solution. He promised this. He said that he was going to give a solution. In the same way that he said to that man, go. And at that exact moment, the servant of that man was healed. And that's what the Lord wants to pray tonight, a cure, a cure of deliverance. The Lord wants to deliver hearts. The Lord wants to transform hearts. The Lord wants to operate life. He wants to operate joy. He wants to operate peace. He wants to operate harmony. But in order for this to happen, you need to leave. You need to confess with your mouth. Because when we confess to the Lord, he also he speaks to us he speaks to God he speaks about us to God and the blessing then is is brought to the place where you need it amen my desire is that is that the Lord tonight may operate in your heart now the praise group is going to sing a song and you'll be speaking with the Lord Whatever you are, speak to God who you are. What needs to happen in your life? Lord, I'm not worthy. 
that you come under my roof. But say just a word, and my servant will be healed. But say this with faith. Ask the Lord, because he's the doctor of doctors. Jesus is our best friend. He knows us. And surely, he has the best for you, and he has the best for me. But in order for this to happen, we need to recognize who we are truly and allow him to operate. And the Holy Spirit is going to do this. While well, the praise group is going to sing a song, you will be speaking with the Lord by faith. The Holy Spirit will be operating your mind and heart. And you will leave this place tonight uh, as a new person, a new creature. Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. And whatever you are unable to do on your own, only the Lord can do. What you can't do through your own means, now the Holy Spirit is testifying in your heart what needs to be changed. But you can't on your own. But tonight, Jesus is saying, go. The same way as you are believing, may be done. And at the exact moment, his servant was healed. And the Lord is going to cure you tonight. The Lord is going to operate a great miracle. And we are going to see the glory of God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Yeah.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I invite the brethren to stand up once again. We're going to have a word of duration to the Lord. In this moment, we glorify your name because we know that you spoke to the depth of our hearts through your word, through the praises. We know that this service was a service according to your will, a service that was already scheduled in eternity, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because every day you have taken care not only of our lives, but also you have taken care of all those we love, Lord, our families. And we praise you, Lord, because Maranatha is being fulfilled in our midst, because soon we're going to be with our God in eternity. Difficult days are coming, but none of it has taken us away from the, our target, which is eternity. We praise you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has shown a man who entered here, and his mind was perturbed, was tormented. And also with thoughts of discouragement, of defeat, frustration. But the Lord tonight, He wants to give you a deliverance of every, all of it, because it doesn't come from the Lord. Servant of the Lord was called to be head. God called you. God uh, called you to be a big uh, winner. If you're living a, a life of defeat, of, if you're living a life of failures, you need to go back to the Lord. You need to uh, walk towards the Lord because what He has for you is our victories. Because what God has for the church are victories. In fact, we are victorious. The church does not pray for victories. The church already prays with victory in their hands. If you have these thoughts of uh, defeat, thoughts of uh, discouragement, you need tonight. You need to receive from the Lord and give yourself up to the Lord and allow the Lord to operate a uh, miracle of deliverance in your life. The worst thing that can have can happen to a man is depression. When a man enters into depression, only the Lord, and the Lord is showing exactly this, that you need to go back to the Lord. There's no other way out. Our vic your victory is in Jesus, and the Lord also has shown a woman who has been for a few days now without speaking with her daughter, angry. <laughs> it's a difficult situation. A, a woman, a mother, now speaking a few days without speaking with her daughter. And the Lord tonight is telling you the following. The Lord is giving you an instruction. You need to immediately call your daughter and apologize because you're a servant of the Lord. Isn't it true? This woman has been trying. She has tried in many different ways. She doesn't think that she's wrong. That's the problem. That's our great problem. We, we are never wrong. There's always someone else who, who is wrong. I'm always right. But that man, he went to Jesus. He confessed who he was, his situation. And the Lord gave him a great blessing. And my, des my hope is that uh, this word may, s may be helpful to us as a uh, direction of what God has for us. We need to confess to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to operate, allow the Holy Spirit to make us leave moments in the presence of God. My brethren, there's no time. You see, this situation of being angry, you know, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. At any moment, Jesus may come back. You know what is worth? You may be angry with your neighbor. You may stay behind and your neighbor will go to heaven. You stay and your neighbor is going to heaven. 
your daughter, your husband, your this situation, of, of course, you, you you had a disagreement, you got angry. That's all right. But remaining in this situation is terrible. Remaining on in your mistake is, is terrible. But the Lord is here tonight. He wants all of us to begin living according to what He has required of us according to what, what he has taught us. But it's, it's not a f enough for us to say this and the Lord want it, but if you don't want it, nothing will happen. But you need to say by faith, you, you need to say, Lord, as not, I'm still angry, I'm still upset, but I don't see my own f failure until the Lord delivers you until the Lord is able to deliver you because that's what he has for us so that we can leave moments of harmony how good it is that the brethren live in union is not only in the church it's at home as well and the Lord has a solution to any difficulty any problem whether it is in a marriage with father and son with brothers and siblings whatever it is the Lord has a solution but do you want a solution? That's the question. Do you want the blessing from God? God is a blessing for men. But we need to want the blessing from God. Amen? May God speak to us, to our hearts, in the same way He has spoken. And may the Holy Spirit find, a, find room to operate. But this woman needs urgently because what you have been doing is not working. Solution is in the Lord. Amen. Let us close our eyes and pray to the Lord so that the Lord may speak to our hearts. Amen. Nobody's saying amen, right? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> right? And nobody's is criticizing anyone here. It hurts, doesn't it? And it's, this message is for me as well. It's for all of us here. The word of the Lord, the good of the word of the Lord is that it serves for everyone. It, it renews every day. It, it is a life. The word of the Lord is a life because it operates whatever you cannot operate. And God goes in the intimacy inside of you, in the nucleus of the problem. It's not here. Whatever the problem is, the Lord goes. His word is a word of power. He ordained the victory and that man received the blessing he was seeking. Lord, we want at this moment ask that you, Lord, may take us home in peace and that we may have a week of victory, Lord, in your presence and that we, from this point forward, that your word may, Lord, flourish in us and that this seed may blossom and that your spirit may make this to produce fruits for the honor of your name. Reproach, Lord, any uh, will that will goes, goes against your will, and any attack of the enemy, and, but this, your message may remain in each heart here and that, Lord, we may test, be witnesses in our own homes, of our own lives, in our hearts, witnesses of your power, and that we may live in harmony, living in peace, in union, for the honor of your name. Glory to Jesus. My church,
our adoration and confirm, Lord, your good words. The prayer they say, in the name of Jesus, in your name we say the, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the, and the gift of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren can sit down. We're going to have a quick assistance, and soon after the assistance, we're going to have a visual with the youth and adolescents. Whoever wants to remain, they're, they're welcome. So if you want a prayer, an assistance, raise your hand quickly. We're going to go towards you to pray. And I, I ask the brethren not to leave. Just a 15 minutes, a period of prayer and, and praises. This is the month of the youth. The Lord has instructed for us to do this tonight. And I remind my brethren that tomorrow, a revelation of the Lord, we're going to have a, a special early dawn. We already sent a message to the groups so that we may pray for the 50 years of the work of the Lord in our midst, the work of the Lord in the midst of the church Maranatha. The Lord is blessing so that the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit may have a government over our lives and a few other topics. So pray at home so that you may, may bless your life. Whoever obeys a revelation, God bless them greatly. Amen. This revelation is for the entire church, in every church, all over the world. Amen. Peace the Lord. The vigil is going to be at home. Amen. The vigil is going to be at home. Okay? Amen. We're going to have Tuesday, a meeting today at 8 o'clock. We're going to have a word about the doctrine of the church. Amen. So the brethren that want to be here, the ushers and deacons should be here. The intercession group needs to be here. The teachers, we're going to review all the basic doctrines that the Lord has given us. It's not doctrines of the Church Maranatha. It's a biblical doctrines. They're going to show this inside of the Bible, where this, those doctrines are. So the brethren, the, the visitors, the ones that want to come, for all the others, they are, have a function in the church. They are conclaimed to be here. Peace of the Lord. <laughs>